Welcome to lesson four of module six, genetic change. In this video, we're going to be focusing on reproductive technologies and specifically, we're going to be looking at artificial insemination and pollination, but then we're also going to look at some IVF and other reproductive technologies. When we talk about a reproductive technology, it's used to artificially intervene in the process of reproduction, whether that's sexual or asexual, and it helps pass on desirable characteristics to the next generation. When we talk about artificial insemination, it's the process of inserting semen into the vagina of an animal, and this allows these animals to produce uh, offspring with desired characteristics. Artificial selection uh, is a process of selecting characteristics in animals for the benefits of humans, and artificial pollination is the dusting of pollen by hand or machinery from anthers to the stigma, and this controls the characteristics of the plants being bred. Selective breeding involves mating a male uh, with the characteristics that you um, desire with a female with another desirable characteristic in the hope that these offspring will inherit these favourable genetic traits. Both parent individuals are different varieties of the same species, which means that the offspring being produced are fertile. And however, some disadvantages occur um, if undesirable genes are inherited with the desirable trait. To selectively breed animals is quite time consuming and costly um, and it can cause injury and trauma to the individuals that are mating. Artificial insemination on the other hand is when we collect sperm from a chosen male and artificially introduce it into females and in this process we're able to introduce it into several selected females. We have to collect the semen from the male and then we have to um, divide it into the semen straws, chill them and freeze them in liquid nitrogen and therefore we can store them for long periods of time and transport them to wherever the female might be um, in order to inseminate her. This is a process most commonly used in cattle, sheep and pigs. If we do this process it overcomes the problems of transporting uh, animals over long distances and also reduces the risk of injury during mating um, and many females can be inserted at the same time so therefore increases the number of offspring being produced. Um, indefinite freezing which means we can produce these offspring many years into the future and it's a technique commonly used in conservation to increase the numbers of endangered species. However, it is quite costly due to the need for specialised equipment and also time consuming um, to collect all the different bits and pieces and then we do see um, further on a reduction in genetic diversity within the populations. IVF is a process used to um, fertilise an egg with sperm outside the mother's body in an artificially created environment and this is a process often used where there's decreased fertility in one or both of the parents and we can see a little flowchart here um, where we have to do all of these processes before we uh, transfer the embryo that has been created outside um, the body before we transfer that to the uterus of the female. This process does reduce genetic diversity um, due to the production of um, large numbers of viable embryos from a small selection of parents with the desirable traits. We do see the inheritance of genes for infertility um, which might not have naturally been passed on if the conception was natural and um, using sperm bags in this process have the potential to alter the genetic composition of the population. Another process is the intracytoplasmic sperm injection and um, it's where the sperm is given a helping hand to enter the egg. Um, this is far more successful when there's male infertility problems um, as opposed to conventional IVF. And then we have artificial pollination and this is where we remove the stamens of a flower and dust the pollen onto the stigma of the same flower or another flower so it can either be self-pollination or um, whether it's on the same plant and if it's on a different plant we see cross-pollination and this allows us to inherit the characteristics we like uh, for the flowers and the production of these crops. We can either do this mechanically um, so this can be done with large blowers or we can do it by hand where we have small brushes that transfer the pollen. Uh, this provides a possibility if we do see a further reduction in the bee population in our ecosystems. Um, it allows us to produce hybrid plants, which is what we did with maize, um, and we see an increased growth rate, greater uniformity and increased yield, and increases the genetic variability within populations. 
That concludes lesson four. Make sure you tune in for lesson five.